So, Ian, well, thanks for joining us. And um, as we look back on the uh, the 1967 quarter final against Everton in the FA Cup, uh, first and foremost, what was your memories building up to that that quarter final? Well, memories. I mean, a long, long time ago now, Ben, as we could imagine. But uh, yeah, very exciting times. You know, we were doing well, we were doing well in the league that season. Of course, when we had the uh, quarter final of the cup to look forward to against Everton. So yeah, happy days and very excited days for everybody concerned with the football club. You said there you you were going uh, great guns in the league as well, weren't you? Um, and, yes, and we were. Exciting times really for the club. Yeah, I think we were second in the league at the time. I think second to Manchester United, who eventually won the league that season. But um, I remember we had some, uh, I think, two excellent games against Manchester United in the league that season. I think we beat them at home and then uh, lost narrowly Old Trafford by one goal to nil, which in a, apparently was one of the best games I've seen there that season. So, uh, yeah, we do well in the league. Unfortunately, it all sort of um, came to an end where we didn't win anything. But uh, certainly did, did, did extremely well that season. And uh, it was a shame that things tended to break up afterwards. Well, the, the match itself at the City Ground, it's been described as one of the best atmospheres, I think, at the City Ground. That's right, yeah. I mean, I think I don't think we played particularly well in the first half, actually. I think we were losing 1-0 at half-time. We hadn't really... Uh, I think what upset us initially in that first half was, of course, was a bad injury to Joe Baker, who was uh, you know, an excellent player, Joe, and a you know, top goal scorer. So we, we sadly missed him, and I think it took us a little bit while to get settled down and um, get back to uh, something like our best. And... Uh, uh, I think on the day, actually, I got all the accolades, but I think Frank Wigner was the star player. He caused the um, defence all sorts of problems and he made all the three goals for me. So, uh, uh, although I got the accolades, I think certainly Frank Wigner was the star of the show. Well, yeah, you said that about Frank getting the uh, the three assists for yourself. But I think the second goal, your second goal in particular, Ian, is, is uh, regarded as a, a fantastic strike. And, uh, it yeah, was, yeah, it was, I think probably that was the best of the three. I think uh, I think the first one was a tap in, the second one was certainly the best of the three. I struck that well once again, I headed from Frank Wingle down to me. And of course, the last one was a bit fortuitous, to say the least. I think it took about four times to get eventually get the ball into the back of that. But I think that created part of the excitement and the entertainment for the day. I think. As you quite rightly said, the atmosphere was absolutely electric that day. I remember my poor old mother was at the game then, and uh, you know she was so excited. And she, I think she came a bit of a bit faint and had to leave the ground. I think with about five minutes to go, so she was that excited. But yeah, the atmosphere was absolutely electric, and uh, of course to get that to, to get that goal in the last couple of minutes was absolutely wonderful for everybody concerned. And the uh, I think on your third uh, third goal, Ian, there was uh, the commentator once famously said that a fantastic rugby tackle from one of the uh, stewards or the policemen on the pitch because the the fans had started to run on at that stage. It really was a yeah, great occasion. I believe they were. I think. Uh, I think. Uh, yeah, you can imagine the excitement that, 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 that was generated by that goal. You know, with a couple of minutes to go, the thought of getting into the semi-final the cup, and um, which you know, which we did do, you could through that goal so yeah I mean the fans were extremely excited and I suppose looking forward to the semi-final yeah and unfortunately obviously not to, to put a damper on things the semi-final didn't didn't go our way against Spurs but... no no not at all I mean it was that uh, I think we never I, I can't actually remember ever beating Tottenham actually even when I played the other cage we may have done but uh, of course our nemesis was Jimmy Greaves I think mm. whenever Jimmy Greaves played against as he scored I think uh, I remember the semi-final in particular I think we started really well as a team the first 20-25 minutes I think we were all over Tottenham and of course uh, then that man Jimmy Greaves popped up and stuck the ball in the back of the net so but I was Jimmy Greaves, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah. A wonderful goal scorer. Absolutely. And just to just to, to, to reflect on the season as well, finishing runners up to Manchester United, it was quite unexpected and, and although no silverware, um it was mm-hmm. it was a tremendous season for Forest. Yeah, yeah, it was it's very sad not to have any silverware, but I think it's always nice to win something when you play well, but uh, unfortunately it wasn't to be. So yeah, that put a bit of a damper on the season somewhat, but in terms of the performances, they were excellent throughout the season. We, you know, I think uh, to be fair to Johnny Carey and Tommy Cavanagh, did an excellent job. We got a really decent side together. We had some, you know, top class players in the team: Terry Hennessy, Henry Newton, John Barnwell, Joe Baker, Frank Wigner. So, you know, we had a plethora of really good players in the side, and it was just unfortunate. That, uh, I think that if, I think if Joe Hand have got injured, Joe Baker in the in the Everton game, I think we would have gone on to win something. Well, Ian, that's perfect. And just before we uh, before we go, have yeah. you got a, a quick message for the Forest fans during these difficult times, obviously having to, to, to stay yeah, indoors? Uh, yeah, I mean, I just wish everybody everybody well, certainly older Forest fans who might remember me, but certainly younger ones as well. I wish everybody concerned with the football club, uh, everybody involved with them, you know, down to the, 
the trainers, the, the, the players, the staff, the ancillary staff, everybody that's involved with the football club and the supporters, I wish them all well and, and let's hope we can get through this, uh, this unprecedented predicament as quickly as possible. You're a legend. Thank you, Ian. <laughs>